Welcome to the joy of coding. Hello, and welcome to episode 365 of the joy of coding. My name is Mike Conley. It's so good to have you here. We're going to be live hacking on some Firefox stuff today. Going to be working on. Well, who knows what I'll be working on. Probably some jumpless stuff, as per the last couple of episodes. The last many episodes, I think, we've been doing jumpless stuff. But we'll get into that. We'll get into it in just a sec. Let me start by sharing my screen. Um, yeah, it's May 8th, 2024, episode 365. I say this every time. A reminder, no plan survives breakfast. I think I know how this episode's going to go. I think I know what we're going to cover. But, you know, it might not go according to plan, and that's okay. Um, we, we're just going to deal with things as they come. You're watching me do my job and part of my job is just dealing with things as they come. And that means I don't have any of the code that I'm going to write pre-written. Um, I don't have any, like, like a stack of paper on what to say. I don't have a script. Um, I'm, I'm doing this as I, I, as I normally do my job You're as I like to say, watching software development in the raw in its rawest form. That's the first thing. The second thing is that the agenda that we're looking at, uh, if you would like to get a copy of it, if you'd like to get access to it, so you can click on these handy dandy links, uh, it's gonna be in a couple of different places depending on where you're watching the stream. If you're watching this on YouTube or diode.zone, it's down in the video description. If you're watching this on Twitch, it'll be down in, I think, the channel details somewhere. And if you're watching this on Air Mozilla, it's over there in the details section. Go ahead and follow along. And as I update the agenda, as I add things to the agenda, this little spinning will spin, and then if you reload the page, you should see the uh, the updated agenda. So, uh, what do we want to talk about today? Well, first of all, congratulations, everyone. We made it to episode 365. Someone pointed out, I think it was last week, that that's one episode for every day of the year. <laughs> Hooray! Um, you know, that's a lot of watching. That's a lot of episodes. Uh, that's the first thing I wanted to bring up. The second thing I wanted to bring up is that I believe I'm coming up to uh, a point where... Uh, I'm going to have to take a little bit of a, like a two week break. I'm doing some traveling and I'm, I'm not going to be able to stream on the, let's see, what were those dates? The 22nd or the 29th. So next week, um, uh, won't be able to stream on May 22nd or 29th. So, uh, episode 366 will happen next week, but then episodes 367 and 68 those will happen uh, starting in June. Uh, episode 367 will be in June, uh, June 5th should be. Um, so uh, episode 366 will go uh, as scheduled next week, but episode 367 will be in June. That's, that's the thing. Okay, uh, before I continue, I want to highlight something. I think I had talked about this feature last, uh, last time I streamed, which was there's this neat new feature added to um, Firefox Nightly, where if you have multiple tabs open and you like right click on a tab, you can close duplicate tabs, which is really great because like I I tend to have many tabs open and a lot of those tabs end up being the same thing because I just forget that I've got so many tabs I forget how many that I have open and they're you know I get I end up having a lot of duplicates, so that's a feature that was added and it's in nightly, and I think it's set to ride the trains. And another feature got added, I think it was early this week or late last week. I think it was actually Monday, which is even, I think even more powerful, which is um, suppose you've got, let's, let's go back to example.com and let's go to Wikipedia um, a few times. Uh, and then let's go to the wiki.mozilla.org and the CBC. Now, let's suppose I've got a bunch of tabs open here and a bunch of them are like um, duplicates. And what I wanna do is I can like clear out all of the duplicates across this window. If I go to the tab, uh, the tabs menu here, and there's an item here to close all duplicate tabs. If I do that, then all of those duplicates get thrown away. And I just have the last recently seen, the most recently seen instances of those tabs stay open. And that is another great way of sort of reclaiming your your you know CPU and memory and, and getting a bunch of tab space back and, and all sorts of stuff. So if you, like me, tend to hoard tabs and you're looking for some assistance in cleaning them up, we've added some utilities to help you do that. 
the right click menu for closing duplicate tabs and right now I don't have any so it's just it's disabled and the item here to close duplicate tabs across the entire window again disabled because right now I don't have any duplicate tabs so uh, check those out if you're using nightly those should be available you don't have to flip any prefs or anything they should just be available for you and if I understand it those will be riding out the trains that I didn't see any like prefs to to control them so they will be going out in 127 I think unless they get backed out we'll see okay well what are we doing today um jump list stuff so last week we posted our patches up for review to use the async fab icon backend uh, for the jump list stuff. We also, I think, posted a fix for, um, was it jump list um, icon? It truncates long icons. There was a, a patch here for um, uh, long URLs being truncated. And both of those patches got feedback from RK Racing. And I thought we would look at that today because I have, actually haven't looked at the feedback. I thought it would be interesting for you to see that feedback, see me react and read that feedback. Uh, and so we can sort of figure out what our next steps are. And if possible, maybe we can even get this stuff because like RK Racing reviewed that stuff fairly quickly. I think it was like either the next day or within the same day, RK Racing was like, here, here's some feedback. And if we can um, satisfy um, his points, maybe we can even land this stuff sooner, like maybe this week, these fixes, and then that could potentially go out in 127, which would be good. Okay, so that's my plan. I also have a build cooking. Um, it's almost done. We're at the toolkit stage. So by the time we're done reading this, uh, this feedback, maybe the build will be done. The first, uh, this is the first of two that I wanted to look at. The other one was um, jump list, was it async jump list yeah this one <coughs> excuse me so this one actually got approval that's interesting um and then this one did not get approval uh it's still waiting on review it's the test one so um we're gonna need uh rk racing to look at that but for now we can take a look at some of these uh this feedback let's start with the the single patch which was fixing that issue where the long URLs were being truncated. I don't know if you recall, but last week we tried, we wrote a, a very, it ended up being a fairly straightforward fix to uh, to make it so that we can, um, uh, you know, not truncate, like to use the property store mechanism that the, um, the Windows Win32 API uh, documentation recommends rather than what we were doing before, which was to use like get arguments and passing in a buffer and getting out uh, something that is truncated at max path. Um, and so I got some feedback here. Pprop store is never released. Uh, after a successful acquisition by query interface, please either make it a ref pointer as plink itself is above or document why it shouldn't be. Ah, that's interesting. So I failed to, uh, uh, oh wow, yeah, okay. So that's a memory leak. Good call, good call. Um, let's make it a ref pointer. Uh, just like p-link here. I, I can't imagine why we'd want this to be just a, a raw pointer. I think I copied this uh, from another implementation. Let's see if I can, whoops, let's see if I can find what was done over there. From jump list builder over here, prop store, and then I released it here. Ah, commit, then release. Uh, and then Yeah, presumably that's that's all we need to do is we just need to, I think release is being called manually here, but if you use a ref pointer, it's expected that the underlying thing implements like release and add ref. And so uh, release will be automatically called whenever the prop store goes out of scope, which is I think what we want. And then there's another uh, comment here. It's a little bit out of scope and probably fine as is, but while get icon location should either should either A, write a zero terminated string to the buffer or B, return some failure code, I'd feel better if this buffer were actually of length max path plus one and had an explicit, possibly redundant null terminator at the end. Uh, NS dependent string doesn't have a special constructor for ref to array though, perhaps it ought to. Okay. So maybe 
we increase uh, the buffer size and then explicitly put a null pointer at the very end to make sure that we've got a um, we've got a null terminated string here. That seems fine. And then I added a test, and then I I was asked to break this up over multiple lines. It's easy. Um, NST string wrapper length is a const expert, so this can be done via static assert. Uh, okay, yeah, sure. Uh, static assert can do. This section starting here needs to be reviewed by someone who knows their left hand from the right when it comes to JSC++ interface. I don't think I qualify. That's fair enough. Okay, so let's let's start by cleaning up um, this patch. Where are we with our build? I think we're nearly done it, um, but we can still open up Sublime. We're at the XPFE part. I actually don't remember which patch is on top of the stack. We might need to um, rebase um, this this patch onto where we are. Um, but we're, we're nearly done the build. Uh, okay, well, while we're waiting for that to finish, we can take a look at the feedback for the other patch here. Um, the very first one is add an async version of the uh, obtain cached fav, fav icon thing. And wow, there's a lot of feedback here. Okay, let's let's start at the top. So no feedback for this. Seems to be okay with that. I'm not really not a fan of passing. Let me increase the uh, increase the uh, font here. I'm really not a fan of passing a promise holder around from object to object in a unique pointer, and even less the fact that the unique pointer in question is optional. Um, yeah. I grant, though, that it's probably the best you can do without a significant rework of the local plumbing. OK, so this is just like, yeah, uh, it'd be nice if this was better. But um, I didn't want to like refactor the entire thing. So this seems like there's nothing much to do. That's just like a note. Um, he's just on the record. Unless you're doing something tricky with templates and perfect forwarding, the modern style is generally to prefer by value arguments and explicit standard move to by r value ref arguments. And it looks like you've already got explicit standard move everywhere that would be re relevant. The suggestion goes for all the by value r ref arguments added in this patch, not just this one. Okay, uh, I didn't know that, so uh, I, I I guess we'll see if it compiles. Um, and, and the tests still pass. Wow, okay, build still going. Uh, it went back to DOM media. I guess there's more to build over in DOM media. Okay, let's keep reading the feedback. Explicitly giving this a null pointer default value wouldn't just reduce the changes that need to be made to current code. It would also implicitly document that null pointer here is perfectly acceptable and should be checked for but not warned about. Okay, that seems perfectly reasonable to me. Um, what else? Knit. The uh, serial event target uh, pointer AIO thread arguments should probably also be by value ref pointer. Um, this, so a ref pointer to the AIO thread. This lets the caller opt to relinquish their own ref pointer, if any, via standard move, eliminating uh, an add ref release pair. Com pointer would also be okay. I don't think the distinction is relevant here. Okay, let's use an NS com pointer actually, because it's an NS I. Um, interface, so that makes the most sense. Um, okay, what else? Uh, param promise holder. If it's not given a default value, please also explicitly document that it may be null pointer. Yeah, okay, we're going to want to add that documentation. It's really awkward that there are two different continu continuation mechanisms here, both explicitly passed all the way down the call stack. It's true. We have two. We've got the runnable and we've got the promise holder. There's no way to make m runnable resolve a promise, since there's no way to tell the runnable what the icon path is. It would be quite feasible to make a promise resolved here invoke in a runnable, though. I'm not going to require that for this patch set, but could you file a follow bug for looking into unifying the async control flow here? That is perfectly reasonable. Yes, I can do that. Uh, this was feedback from an earlier review. Typically, you do something like this. I think this is done. Uh, where instead of doing IO thread dispatch, so this is done. Um, then this is also done. This is also done to do Christmas tree. 
this is where chaining fits best for readability. Uh, I think I ended up using invoke async. Um, so that's good. And then alternative AIO thread equals ref pointer get current serial event target, though you'd have to make this lambda mutable for it to be movable for uh, it to be mu mutable from. Interesting. Um, get current ref pointer. I think I'm actually, I'm just gonna stick with what currently is there. Uh, this assert is probably unnecessary. That. That is probably fine, yeah, okay. I don't need that, assert. And then there was this, where I obtain cache five icon, what was he recommending? Reject resolve exists inside of obtain cache five icon async. I ended up not doing that inside of like a helper. Um, Copy paste error obtain cached icon file async some other method async. Yeah, I ended up not like breaking this out into its own method. I I could look into doing that again, but I seem to recall the compiler not being happy about that for reasons that I don't understand or don't remember. Oh, and then on the other hand, this bit could act probably use an assert. Unless you'd expect the usual reader of this code to know that the get fav icon data for page requires the main thread. I didn't for what little that's worth. Okay, yeah, absolutely. We can we can totally put that on the main uh, and assert there. Okay, all of those seem like reasonable pieces of feedback. The biggest chunk that I'm actually um, unsure about is like this, this comment. I guess we can take a look into doing that. Uh, this is an old piece of feedback from Pearson's from uh, I think a month or so back. We can take a look at that maybe at the end, but um, Let's take a look and see how our build's doing. Our build is done. Uh, so let's take a look at our patch tree. Great. I think what I want to do, let's, let's apply the feedback to the patch stack that we're currently on so that we can avoid doing some rebuilding. We can get some stuff done. Um, and then we can build this patch. That might take a little bit because, well, maybe it won't. I don't know if it will. Uh, we'll build this bit, and then we'll do the feedback for that one. That's our game plan. And we'll see how long we can uh, uh, see how, 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 how far that takes us. Leftmost Cat says, I don't suppose you've come across conventional comments and have opinions on it. No, I don't know what that is. Let's see what conventional comments is. Does anyone know what conventional comments is? Comments that are easy to grok and grep. Comments like this are unhelpful. This is not worded properly. By simply prefixing the comment with a label, the intention is clear and the tone dramatically changes. Suggestion. This is not worded properly. Issue. This is not worded correctly. Labels also prompt the reviewer to give more actionable comments. Suggestion. This is not worded properly. Oh, I see. And then there's like some standard. Now, that's interesting. We actually have mechanisms for doing that inside of Fabricator. Like I can say nitpick um, uh, X, Y, Z. I think this is being provided by, or a question. I think this is being provided by an extension. I downloaded an extension. Um, let's see if I can, we can find it. Uh, it's like fabricator fab conventional comments. Yeah. Um, and this is from uh, one of my colleagues, Nicola. Uh, and you can find it here. And there's a link to add the, if you're doing reviews in fabricator, that might be helpful. So um, conventional comments in fabricator. So give, give that a shot. I'll put a link and then also link to the conventional comments documentation. Uh, where was that? Conven conventional comments.org. All right. Uh, go ahead. If you reload the, the agenda, you should have uh, the links you need there.
All right, so let's start applying this feedback. What I'm going to do is I'm going to update to the topmost patch. This is the one that RK Racing had the most feedback for. The other, this one, I think he just straight up approved, and he hasn't looked at the tests yet. Um, hopefully, he isn't on like PTO or something. We'll see. Okay, so we've got the associated patch uh, checked out, or we've updated to it. Let's take a look at the feedback. We'll go right to the top again. So um, this warning that the file is uncovered is bunk. Our code cov coverage analysis is wrong. Um, and I don't know why it doesn't know that this file is actually covered by our G test. I think G tests might not actually be included in, in some of our like code coverage analysis. And um, uh, I filed a bug for that. Automated review. G tests don't appear to be included when computing coverage. Um, so we can ignore that. There's a bug file for that. So the first piece of feedback was uh, not using, oh, no, this was this was just like, I'm not a fan. And I was like, I agree. Um, this, we can start looking at this. So uh, we're going to get rid of the ampersand ampersand, which uh, I, that, I think that's like, what is what is exactly I don't remember what that's called when you're you're not passing by value you're not passing by reference you're passing by like reference reference um I think that's like movie like move move a kind of like a move thing uh, move semantics uh, C plus plus move semantics I think it's like an R value thing um and so you sometimes will see it uh like this R value reference to a string. And he's saying that you don't actually need to do that uh, because the modern style is to prefer by value arguments and explicitly use standard move. So we can just apparently get rid of that. So let's try it. So that's line uh, 622. Ampersand, ampersand is also logical and. Yes, that is true. But in this particular case, for some reason, the C, the people who designed C++ were like, eh, move semantics. They were already using one ampersand for reference. Why not? Oh, sorry. This is going into winutils.h. Winutils.h, was it 622? Yeah. And we're going to say, OK, you don't need both ampersands. And I guess we need to do the same thing to where it's implemented. Um, down here. And that should still build, I think. And he says that the suggestion goes for all the by uh, R value ref arguments added in this patch. So let's see if we can find some more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do ampersand, ampersand, and look around. Uh, here's another one. Uh, here's another one. Here's another one, another one. Uh, that This is a logical and. OK, and I think we're at the last one. So we're going to go ahead and remove all of those. Um, so let's do that. Start at the top. We'd already removed this one. Uh, this is the implementation. No, it is not. We've got one directly underneath it, async encode and write icon. So we, that's in winutils h. Oh, async encode and write icon. Was there one above it? Yeah, it's right here. OK, 589. So we, we'll do that. So async fav icon data ready. We'll go over here. We'll get rid of the R value thingy. Uh, that's another one. So that takes care of, yeah, I had taken care of the second one first. So uh, this one's now done, and this one was done before. And what's next? Uh, there's the cache icon file from favicon uri async.
here. And uh, we're still in win utils H. I should keep, I'm going to keep that one on the left. Um, the definition is here. We're going to get rid of the double ampersand there. Oh, cannot be form performed. I think it's already being read into memory because of the compiler. Let's let's stop the build because I'm I'm building at the same time as I'm editing files. Oh boy. Uh, how do I exit? Terminate batch job. For real, release, release. There we go. Um, and the cache icon for Favicon async layers for that one. And what was next? Okay, now we're in the implementation. So we actually, we did remove that one. We did remove that one. And we did remove that one. And we're back at the top. So that should be all of them. So let's, let's now run the build. And I have to open up my shell again. Guess it's the move operation when it's in function parameters. That's right. And I think what was basically happening was I was um I was I was being too verbose. I was saying move. No, really, move. Um you know, at, at the at the call site rather than at the function signature. So, I think we can mark this one done. Um, and then he wants an explicit null pointer uh, for async and code and write icon. I'm going to guess he wants something similar for the other one as well. Um, the uh, uh, explicit null pointer down there. Okay, so where are we? Async and code and write icon. We're going to say this can be null pointer. Oh. I did it again, gang. I did it again. <laughs> Terminate bad job. Close. I shouldn't be editing and building at the same time. Let's just do all. Let come what may. Let's 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 uh, just finish our edits and then we'll build. So that was the one of them. What was the other one? Uh, Async and code and write icon. And then there's another one down here for. Um, async favicon data ready. I think you can say that's null pointer. Uh... Okay, that's done. The serial event should probably be by value with a ref pointer. Okay. And then, so we're gonna change the signature. So instead of taking a raw pointer, we're gonna take an nscom pointer. Serial event target. But was there a reason why I I took the raw pointer AIO thread? Let's take a look at the implementation. Cash async. Where's the implementation? Here it is. AIO thread. And the reason async fav icon ready um, takes a lazy idle thread. And did I change that? Async uh, uh, icon ready. Favicon data ready. Favicon data ready. I changed it so that it became a 
NSCOM. Okay. So I think this should just be an NSCOM pointer all the way down then. So anywhere that I'm doing like raw serial event targets, let's change that to be an NSCOM pointer for an NSI serial event target. Here's another one. Not too many. And then over here, same deal. This comp pointer. Okay. And that's all our raw pointers for serial event target taken care of. And he suggests that I add, yeah, the optional um, the optional promise holder here. So constructs, this is inside of the implementation. Here we go, runnable at param. Uh, a promise holder, we're going to say equals null. Uh, optional promise holder that will uh, that will be forwarded uh, to oh boy how do I want to do this yeah forwarded to async uh, what was it async Encode and write icon. Code and write icon. Uh, uh, if getting the fab icon from the service exists, from the fab icon. Not exists, succeeds. If it doesn't succeed, the promise, the held promise, Ma's promise, will be rejected. Right, because I'm pretty sure in the destructor, or do we do it over here? Yeah, we re if the promise holder exists, we reject. Okay. Do we have something similar for async fab icon? code and write icon. We do not. OK, done. Yeah, I should file a follow-up bug. I'm going to go do that before uh, I post another revision. And then there was all this stuff. Uh, Interesting. Um, unless there's a distinct advantage, I'll stick with what I have for now. Distinct advantage, or it's more idiomatic to do it that way. I'll stick with what I have for now. Um, the assert is probably unnecessary. I agree. So let's, oh no, don't delete the PC. <laughs> Um, let's go down here. We can get rid of this assert. Done. 
we'll look at that at the end. Um, th this could use an assert. Models assert that we're on the main thread inside of cache icon file from favicon URI. Cache icon file for favicon from favicon URI async. Here, he wants me to put it just above where the runnable is defined. Okay, done. So that's done. Let's see if that builds. Now that I'm done messing around with the, <laughs> the header file, let's reopen a shell um, and let's run build. Smurf D says, guess it's the move operation when it's in function parameters. Yeah, that's right. I think that's correct. Now that's to be to be clear, you know, I write C fairly frequently, but like move semantics are a thing that I am still fairly uncomfortable with. Um, you know, I I remember first reading about them three or four years ago, I think. I work with someone at Mozilla who is, I think, on the standards or like the C++ language committee or, or in that community where the, the language is developed. And so thankfully, he's in the Toronto office and I'm able to talk to him about like, oh, how does this work? What's going on here? And he was able to patiently explain it to me. Unfortunately, a lot of that information has fallen out of my head. But I have the basics of it, which is what we're doing is instead of, you know, passing... Um, passing copies of information around and uh like that that was one way of doing it, pass by value and then there's pass by reference where you're saying i'm not going to give you a copy of this thing i want you to process i will get, give you a pointer to this thing um but it's almost like the the function call is like not gaining control of the thing it's like you're you're saying here yeah you can have keys to my beamer it's like you're handing um keys to a valet and saying do what you will even though i still own this car do what you will with it move is more like you hand over the keys and the like the registration of the vehicle over to the valet and say you now own this car this is yours now and you know so if if you just if you're it's your responsibility maybe someday you'll give it back to me the, the keys and the registration but um Oh, what's going on here? Big explosion. No viable conversion from ref pointer lazy idle thread to com pointer serial event target. Is this why I did this? Lazy idle thread. Lazy idle thread does implement serial event target. Maybe, and that's maybe what happened here. Um, so in on line 1049, AIO thread happens to be so in the in the original implementation as a ref pointer a lazy idle thread ref pointer do we ever do like ref pointer nsi that'd probably be strange right no i guess we do it sometimes ref pointer nsi runnable nsi doc shell okay Okay, so then let's maybe instead of using com pointer, let's see if s com pointer nsi serial event target. Let's see if we can replace those few that I I used here to ref pointer. Okay. And then I think there were a few in the header over here. Ref pointer. Uh, pointer. Ref pointer. Ref pointer. 
All right. Let's let's see what it thinks of that. I'm making it up. I'm making it up as I go. Aren't we supposed to R I I R? What's that again? Resource instantiation is something. Release. Re what is R I I R? R I I R. Rewrite. Oh, rewrite it in Rust. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I wish. Ideally, I wish I was. Uh, I wish I had the time, energy, skill, and uh, you know expertise to rewrite this whole thing in a memory safe language. You, you're, you get what you can. All right, it's compiling. Let's see what happens. Let's see if it likes it. I hope that this stream isn't mostly, like I haven't run any statistics. I hope it's not mostly me waiting for compilers. That's a terrible stream if that's what my stream mostly is. Um, the good news is that we appear to have completed compiling widget. So uh, let's hope we link properly. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, what you gonna do? All right, well, while that's running, now we can think of a little bit about um, what RK Racing was saying, or not RK Racing. We, it was this other piece of information from Pearson's, and this was from a, a, a much earlier version of this patch. Oh no 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 no! It did not like it. It explodes during the linking step. It's exploding. Out of line definition. Win utils seventy seventy two one. Async favicon data ready does not match any declaration. Oh, did I did I miss one? Oh, I forgot to save this file. Silly, silly. Build. Smurfty says not that much building. Well, that makes me feel a lot better. Uh, let's take a look at this earlier version of the revision uh, that Pearson's was commenting on and what he was saying. Um. So I had this like big old function here and I had like to do's and commented out code and he was saying, well, what you can do is um, instead of this thing here, you can take this logic inside of this Lambda and I think like factor it out into its own function and then uh, and then at some point you somehow call it. I don't think he made it clear how you call it. Um, but basically I think what he's saying is let's factor this out into its own helper. Okay. Uh, oh, more explosions. No viable conversion from such and such to ref pointer from com pointer serial event target to ref pointer serial event target. That's line 1162. 1162. So how about we make this a ref pointer serial event target? Now this factoring out, I guess it's still relevant. Um, basically what he's suggesting, I think, is to take the logic that, called cache icon file from fav icon URI async. Have that take it. 
Yeah, basically, because there's like a lambda here and inside that is another lambda. I think he's saying to take this outer lambda and factor it out into its own function, its own method, rather. Okay, we got a successful build. I'm not trying to applaud myself. I'm applauding all of us. Um, so let's amend quick commit before uh, before the computer crashes. All right. Um, now let's try this factoring out business and see if we can get that to build. So it's really not that that much, I don't think. It's um, invoke async and then can you pass in something that's not a lambda? Can you pass in a, a method? Um, let's look at some examples. So that's a lambda. That's a lambda. Lambda. Is there like an invoke async that's like invoke, it's, it's different, it's like invoke async method. Invoke a function, example, a lambda asynchronously. Function. Invoke async. There's lots of different invoke asyncs. Invoke async method call. Method call. Method call base. Method call. Proxy runnable. Invoke async impl. So I'm getting a whiff that maybe you could do it this way. But does anyone do it? Say, ah, oh, here's one. Yeah, you can just pass a, refer pass a reference. Okay, let's try that. So we're gonna call this little thing um, in here. A little helper. Except that, like, how do you pass in? Oh, that's how you pass in arguments, I guess. Args. Okay. I think this doesn't really save us a whole lot. Um, like maybe, oh, maybe it's this that he wants to be factored into its own method. That might make more sense. Um, let's go back to the, the feedback. Favicon service retrieval. Before, yeah, I don't know if that really buys as much. I guess maybe it's a little more readable. Okay. All right. Um. So let's go back to the, let's go back to where we were. And we're gonna factor out this little function here at the bottom. And we're gonna figure out how to move stuff to it. And we'll call it 
Fab icon helper. What do we call it? Um, call to obtain cash that can file async call to promise cash. Oh, I think it was supposed to be this. I think we've tried this before. Um, and so, yeah, let's let's try it again. So I'm going to take this structure. Whoop, whoopsie daisy. Control X. Put it here. We're going to bring it all back. Looks like some alignment got busted in there too. Make a mods promise holder. And then what we're gonna do instead of this is we're gonna pass in a reference to fab icon helper promise cached icon fave file from fab icon URI async and then the arguments it needs, which is just the using shortcut cache dir and just the page URI. Okay. Um, and that was like a boolean. So, um, doesn't, oh, it does need the IO thread. What the heck? Did it take other, hang on, let me go back a little bit. It also took the, uh, the, the current thread. Okay, standard move current thread. Oh yeah, here it is, it's over here. So it needs the ICO file. So this is really just this. Um, so the arguments will be page URI. Call that like that. Uh, we need the IO thread. So that's an AIO thread becomes that. Yeah. And then what else do we need? We need the whether or not we're using the cacher. And in this case, this is a Boolean. Oh, thank you very much. I just got a tea delivery. Hi -o! Very good. Thank you so much. Um, and I think, yeah, this is this is taking a boolean. Yeah. Um, wait, what? AIO thread URL shortcut. Okay. Um, let's go back for a second here. Go to the previous revision. Use shortcut cache dir. And use shortcut cache dir 
is definitely a Boolean. Okay. and then it also needs the ICO file. So let's what was the order it was in before? The current thread was the last one in the ICO file. The shortcut cacheter was actually the first one, then the page URI. Okay. So here then the page URI, then the ICO file. The ICO file is what? NSI file? All right, NSI file. SCOM pointer, NSI file, AICO file. And what was the last one? I think it's the thread. And then the thread. Okay. So that formatting is garbage. Don't worry about it. That returns a promise. So we can get rid of that. So then holder becomes these things. Red point promise holder and your funk. Then we pass along all of this stuff. A fav icon page URI. A ICO file. A IO thread. A use shortcut cache dir. Null pointer, standard move holder, return promise. Okay, so let's move those in those order, in that order. Um, A uh, use shortcut cache dir. Page URI, standard move ICO file, current thread. I think that might do it. Let's see if it builds. I'm not happy with the formatting whatsoever, uh, but let's see. Um, okay, well, while we're seeing whether or not that will build, was there anything else that needs resolving? I think not. Uh, we can probably mark the second one as done. He, he was just correcting himself uh, because he, he ended up using the same method name there. So we can mark that one as done. It's really just this one, except what's the other unresolved? Oh, I got to file a bug. Um, okay, so we can file that bug right now, actually, while we're waiting for this. Uh, that depends on this bug. Unify async uh, control flow in win utils for async fava icon fetching. And then I'll say in bug such and such. In bug such and such, I added a, a mechanism to allow um, a caller to await a, pro a Moz promise to resolve with the um, uh, win utils uh, for the win utils uh, fav icon caching mechanism. This uh, operates this optional. Um, mechanism operates alongside a pre-existing optional runnable, NSI runnable mechanism. It's pretty awkward 
to have two um, similar me mechanisms sit side by side. Two similar optional mechanisms sit side by side. What would be better is to either transition all of the um, callers to use the Moz Promise mechanism and to get rid of the runnable, or to have the Moz Promise. What was it? What was his suggestion? Uh, awkward. It would be quite feasible to make a Moz Promise resolved here invoke a runnable, though. Um, or to have the Moz Promise mechanism, or have the NSI runnable mechanism get resolved by a Moz Promise by the Moz Promise somehow. The former might be better though, if possible. Having just a single way of getting an answer back on when, if and when the fav icon gets fetched would be really nice. Um, and I'll call that a task. Submit bug. How did our build go? Our build failed because it's never heard of no matching function call. Uh, I guess I didn't call invoke async correctly. Also, it's never heard of promise cache icon file from favicon URI async. Um, okay, well, let's. Let's take a look here. What do we need to do? Um, we saw this example here. And does this need to be like static or something? Ref pointer add on GMP thread. Insert on GMP thread. Let's, it's not static, it's protected. Maybe that's enough. We'll make it protected. And we'll put it over here. Avacon helper, public, uh, protected. Um, and, oh, promise cache icon file from Favacon URI. What the? Oh. It's right here. And I changed the format of it. OK, so I need to just update the signature. Um, for some reason, I was getting away with not implementing that before. I guess nothing was calling it. And maybe that's enough to resolve the invoke async problem. Maybe it's like, hey, uh, you're not using invoke async correctly because you're passing in something that I've never, I've never heard of. Like the linker has no idea. I guess that's possible. I somehow doubt it though. I suspect that we're not using invoke async correctly. Oh, and then we have to wait. How long did it take last time? A minute 30. More like, yeah, a minute 38 before we had an answer. So strap in. We've got like another minute before we can find out. Uh, but we got that bug filed, so we can at least um, update this. Uh, good idea, filed such and such. Okay, still building. Still, still going. We we might be at the one thirty mark. Drum roll. 
Hey, hang on. Sound effect time. Drum roll, please. No! Okay, so we're not using Invoke Async correctly. I figured. So how did they use it over here? Um, they said Invoke Async, then you pass in the thread this. I go to the thread this um, thread oh and then I passed in a string what's this um, there is no this in the event that we're Obtain cached icon file async is a is a static method. There is no this. So uh null. Let's see if it likes that. Also, I'm gonna quickly do mock lint fix. just to fix up the formatting. Wait, not the whole thing, outgoing. Just because the formatting is really starting to upset me. Five warnings, five fixed. All right, much better. Okay, now try and build it. So we've got another minute and a half to wait to get uh, get ourselves an answer. So while we wait for that, uh, is there any? I don't think there's anything else to do here. That was all of RK Racing's feedback, and it, he gave it an approval even after all that feedback, which is quite a vote of confidence. That's very nice. Um, Let's take a look at this other patch. I think you just said, oh, if it's feasible, I'd suggest that some logging to confirm the above comment is warranted just in case. But it has uh, may throw NS error not available if the icon doesn't yet exist on the disk but has been requested. It might also throw an exception if there was a problem fetching the favicon from the database and running to the disk. Either case is not fatal, so we ignore them here. I'd suggest some logging to confirm the above comment is warranted here just in case. Um, logging. I guess I can add, yeah, I could use, I could add some logging, sure. We'll do that in the next step. All right, we're approaching one minute 30. Here we go. Come on, big money. No whammies. Hoo ah! Okay, um, no matching function for invoke async. Candidate template cannot match this type against null pointer. Well, then what am I supposed to do whenever I'm a static method? Like, I, I, if I'm a static method. this type invoke method Method. All right. Whoops. 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 This type. What? 
this type, Ma's Promise, async. Candidate requires three arguments. Oh, but eight were provided. Candidate template ignored on 16, 6, 1760. Ma's promise 1760. Um, here, this one was ignored. Invoke async for the target. This type. Call her name promise, then args. And I. In C++ static uh, method, what is this? What is this? I don't think this has any value. So if I were to like pass in this, I don't think it's going to know what I'm talking about. I think we are in rough shape. Um, I'm going to I'm going to undo all of this. I'm going to put us back the way we were. With the uh everything in line in this in the nested lambdas. I realize that uh you know I don't think it's gaining us much. So I'm going to push back a little bit on that feedback and take us right back. Uh, although I realize now that I can also get rid of um, okay I can fix some of the formatting in here probably yeah um, Right? Wait, is that correct? One, two, and two. Oh, maybe it was right to begin with. Shoot. Okay. I think it was right to begin with. Um, and then what was the other thing I wanted to do? Oh. Uh, there was that implementation over here for like promise, like we don't need that. This is no one uses this, so we can get rid of that. And I'm gonna run build. This should up. Oh, this should pass. Or this should build correctly. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push back on this comment a little bit. And say this ends up being a lot harder because to do because um, favicon such and such is a static uh, method and the invoke async you were suggesting that I use uh, expects me to pass a this type um, and I'm gonna link to Uh, this type um, when I try to forward to a separate method. That works for uh, instance methods, but not for static methods. So I think I'll stick with my nested lambdas for now. All right, this should build. Will it build? <sighs> Will 
Will it build? Come on! I mean, we're way past where it would have failed before, so I'm gonna say probably. Come on! This is crazy. All right, well, we're way, way past where I would have expected the same comp compilation error. There we go. Now we're, we finished linking zool.dll, so great. Great job, everyone. We did it. We'll run the linting. We'll amend. Uh, and then in the last 10 minutes, let's put that logging in and put up another revision. Um, That's my plan. Excuse me. Off, so because uh, this, um, uh, what was it, the, what was the, this one, because this one actually fixes a bug, I'm going to maybe work on this a little bit off stream to try and get it in before the soft freeze. Um, I'd, I'd like to get this one fixed and out to release faster, and I, I don't think I can do it if I'm only working on it during Wednesdays. So I might actually work on up, like applying this feedback um, off stream. Sorry about that. Mock, lint, fix, outgoing. Mm. There was another um, there was another interesting jump list related bug that I thought y'all might find kind of neat. Um, jump lists uh, resilient to config. Yeah, e access denied. So this one's also up for review. This is maybe going to fix some of the um, situation. Some people have noticed that their jump lists are completely not populated at all with the new backend. And I think I realized why, and or, or someone helped me figure out why, which is that there is a setting in Windows that allows you to disable certain parts of the jump list. Um, basically the, the custom destination part while keeping the tasks in the jump list. And we were not um, handling that particular case. So um, you can get whenever you try and add like the custom items, which is like the, the frequent frequently visited sites, you can get an e access denied from Windows. And we were, or we were like bailing out entirely and like failing to commit the list. But what we really needed to do was to commit the list despite the e access denied, just like basically ignore the fact that we couldn't add those things. And uh, I've, I've d written a patch to do that. I've got a test, I'm waiting for the, the review here. And that will hopefully, um, fix some people who are in that particular configuration of Windows, which would be great. Okay, so that's all. Linting's done. We're gonna HG next. Sorry, I'm getting peppered with messages. Okay. Um, and yeah, what I wanted to do was add logging. Do we have any existing logging in here? I don't think we do. So we're gonna add a logger. Um, we actually have a great mechanism for doing that now, which is um, log console. Instance. Yeah. Um, We'll put it up here with the other lazy getters. 
lazy log console, console create instance we'll call it Windows jump lists, uh, max log level, we'll call it, um, what are the other prefs that are already here? Browser taskbar logging, log false, we'll do warn, okay. Um, lazy log console warn. Um, it doesn't need to get it, but it has been requested. The icon doesn't yet exist on disk, but has been requested. I also throw an exception if there was a problem fetching the favicon from the database and running to the disk. Either way is not failed, so we ignore them here. Uh, failed to uh, fetch favicon for URI.spec. Okay. Um, we should probably make sure that this works and doesn't actually cause like an exception to be thrown somehow. Um, let's make this always throw, um, throw new error test. So I didn't get any warnings there, but if I set about config browser taskbar log, and we set it to true, hmm. build? I guess I didn't build. Should have built. All right, mock build. weird because none of the fab icons showed up so it was almost like it knew that I was supposed to be throwing an exception there that's strange what just happened there hmm all right well let's let's see what happens this next go around We're almost done episode 365. Uh, while we wait for this to sort of finish off, go ahead and let me know what you thought of this episode. There's a rate this episode link at the bottom of the agenda here. I'll drop it into the chat. Link to rate this episode. Boom, there it goes. It's in the chat. Uh, use that to let me know what you thought, what you want to see more of, what you want to see less of. What uh, what do you appreciate? What do you not appreciate about the stream? What Do you have any questions for me? I can try and answer questions on the stream. Maybe you want to know more about some component inside of Firefox we could explore. Um, maybe you want to know about, you know, how does this thing work? Or tell me about, I don't know. I'm, I'm just making stuff up. There we go. Fail to fetch fab icon. 
great. Now, if that I, I seem to recall, I have the um, taskbar.log set to true. Let's set it to false. There, yeah, okay. Um, failed to fetch fav icon for a URL. And then let's actually also put the exception in there. And uh, I think that's it. Um, So I'm going to go ahead and amend, and then hg next. Oh, oh, wait. Let me get that uh, throw new error test out of there. Whoops. <laughs> um, hang on. Shouldn't, don't, don't commit that. Uh, that's, that's bad. Let's get rid of that. HG absorb. I knew there was something I was forgetting. Yeah, do not, do not commit that. Okay, and now, um, I guess let's run our tests real quick. So uh, there are two types of tests I want to run. I want to run the G tests and the tests that we added in this last patch. Um, okay, so that's this one test jump list builder. Mock test will run. Nope. No. Mock test test jump list builder obtain and cache fab icon async.js. So we'll run that test. Then we'll run the G tests. And then we'll call the episode done. Oh, I'm being lit up. What's going on here? Okay. Um, is there anything else jump list related to mention? No, I'm going to I'm going to try and address this review feedback and put up another uh put up another revision. Um, I need to find someone who is comfortable reviewing my test here because uh, RK Racing is like, I don't really know my left hand from my right hand when it comes to the JS C++ interface, which is perfectly reasonable. Um, mock G test, jump list builder dot star go. Now, unfortunately, whenever I do this, it has to build all the G tests. Um, hopefully this doesn't take too long. I think it'll probably take only a minute or so. But if this passes, then up for review they go. Um, yeah, break this up over multiple lines. Great idea. Static assert. Um, I guess that's something you can do inside of a G test. Okay. Static assert. Right, because this is this will be a static. This is a statically defined string, so therefore the length is static. Okay, makes sense. 
Almost done. Almost done the episode, gang. And then I'll see you next week. We're going to be... Um, we're going to maybe round out the stuff. Maybe we'll work on something new. I feel like this this jump list stuff is, is basically at a close. Uh, and maybe maybe we can work on getting rid of the old mechanism. That's what we'll do. Let's work on... Let's work on removing the old jump list mechanism. That'll be exciting. Uh, and that should be fairly straightforward. Um, I mean, he says, knock on synthetic wood. And then, and then the transition to our world of not doing things on the main thread with jump lists will be, the journey will be complete. And you will have been with me for the whole ride from conception to, um, retiring the old main thread IO backend joy. Um, and once we get rid of that old backend, I think that frees us up to maybe clean up. Maybe we can work on unifying those control systems, the, the async control flow that we've been talking to RK Racing about, because it eliminates one of the users of the old mechanism, the runnable mechanism. And, uh, and I think there's only one after that besides the new jump list backend. And then we can like maybe, um, converge on using the promisey, the promisey methods, uh, promisey me mechanism rather than the runnable. And that'd be good. Just being responsible, cleaning stuff up where I can. Oh man. I guess if you've not built the G tests, then it takes a while. We're almost there. Like, I don't know if you can tell we're, it does it in alphabetical order. We're at S. Um, there might be some testing and toolkit G tests. Um, G test runner warning usage of ASCII file functions is forbidden on Windows. Excuse me. Okay, some toolkit G tests, great. Um, some toolkit profile G tests, that's fun. Uh, the profiler has some G tests. Widget, these are the ones we care about. And that's the ones we're actually going to be running. Or uh, widget windows tests, sorry. Not um, widget tests. Widget windows tests. And XPCOM. That should be the like the last directory of G tests. So um, that's good. We don't have to build any more G tests. We can just run them, right? Come on! Uh, maybe it's drum roll time. Let's go. Run the tests. Test harness. I also think it, it might almost be time for a, a new desktop computer, a new Windows machine. Maybe, uh, maybe this is the year. But for now, come on, G tests. You got it. You got this. Ah, oh, come on. Run them. Run the G tests. I believe in you! Yay! <laughs> it worked! Okay, so we're done there. Let's post this up for review, and that's the episode. Thanks so much for watching episode 365 of The Joy of Coding. Um, address review feedback. And I will see you next week with episode 366. And uh, and we'll see what we we'll see what happens. Um, have yourselves a great week, everybody. Take care. Bye bye. The joy of coding. See ya.